1933, uh, the German working class does not come to power. Instead, the Nazis come to power. And there's not a Nazi revolution or a Nazi counter-revolution in terms of how Hitler becomes chancellor. He's invited into the position by the bourgeoisie, by the right center politicians, by the German capitalists who have decided they're going to make a deal with Hitler. And the deal is you attack the left, you crush the left, you crush the unions and the socialists and the communists, but especially the communists. And, uh, you know, we'll have a we'll have a treaty, we'll have an alliance. And they thought they could maybe tame Hitler. Well, in a way, Hitler tamed them after he had destroyed the left. But also, uh, he was very much in the pocket of the German industrialists. He was very much in the, you know, in tandem with the German capitalist class. And, e and even when Germany invades France in 1940, under the leadership of Hitler, it turns out that the French bourgeoisie is also prefers uh, to work with the German fascist leadership uh, rather than the French workers and, and the French bourgeoisie capitulates uh, to the German invasion. All of this shows that the tendency towards fascism is actually an organic part, not of some sort of just like a lunatic part of the population that becomes mad or insane with fascist ideology, but it becomes a resort of capitalism at a moment when capitalism is racked by crisis. And 1930s was a period of crisis, of, of class struggle that couldn't be managed and, and class struggle that continued to grow. And because the communists were unable to take the power in Germany, the German bourgeoisie says, well, look, we can put an end to all of this class struggle by imposing on the German working class a fascist regimentation and the destruction of the left. And that seems very attractive to the capitalists all over Europe. And in fact, all of Europe becomes fascist, all of continental Europe. And even in the United States, a big part of the U.S. ruling class was very pro-Hitler. It was in World War mm -hmm. II that they turned against Germany. But in the 1930s, it was John and Ellen, John Foster Dulles, Ellen Dulles, who became CIA and Secretary of State in the, in the Cold War. There was the Bush family, the Kennedy family. Of course, Henry Ford, they're all, they were all pro-German. And the pro-German sentiment was very strong in the United States bourgeoisie in the ruling class. But 